In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up some version control using Git and Source Tree. Now, if you're not familiar with what version control is, it's a way that you can save backups and changes to your project so that you can change between them anytime. So if you do something, you make a whole pile of changes and something goes wrong, unless you make a full backup of your project constantly, you have no way of going back and reversing those changes without manually doing everything yourself. Version control allows you to go back to any state of your project that you save. And it's also good for complete backups as well. Now, some other good points for version control is it allows you to work in groups with other people so you can work on the same project. And it also allows you to work on your own project yourself from multiple computers. So if you have a desktop and a laptop you switch between, this will allow you to constantly stay up to date on the project on both computers. The way it works is it saves snapshots or commits of your project as you see fit. So you have to actually go and make the save and determine when that is. So here I'm going to show a little demonstration. This is from the Udemy course that I made. And what I did is I made a save or a commit for every video or lecture in the course. And this way, anytime if I need, I can go back and change my project to the exact state during that video without having to change anything manually. Then I can actually go and look the same issue if somebody's having a problem and I have to help troubleshoot. I can go back to see exactly what they are at at that stage. So without version control to do this, like I mentioned, the only way to do that would be complete backups of your whole Unity project every time you want to make a save. And that would start taking up a lot of time and disk space and it's just not practical. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm actually just recreating an old game I was making, a space game called Astraeus. I'm going to actually start that again. And while I'm starting it, I'm going to set up Git and Source Tree and show you how I do it here. So I'm just going to make a quick new Unity project here. I'm just going to make it a URP. And I'm just going to call the project Astraeus. So you can make any project. And while that project's opening, I'll just explain. So Git is actually the back end of how it manages all of this version control. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use a front end for it called Source Tree, which is just a, a GUI or a graphical user interface for accessing Git. Uh, when you get more advanced, you can just use Git right from the command line and type in the prompts you want to use. But for me, I just keep it very basic. I don't need anything fancy for it. So I just like using Source Tree. This will give you a, a step on how to start using Git and Source Tree and version control. And then from there, you can branch off and, and start using more advanced features as you see fit. Now, by default, Git only supports files under 100 megabytes. If you need a specific file to be over 100 megabytes, there is something you, you can add called large file support, and it can be enabled for your, for your project. I've never run into a scenario where I ever have anything even close to that. And I'm talking about single files, not your whole project. So if you do need to use single files, like large videos or anything that you can't break up under 100 megabytes, then you're going to want to look into large file storage or large file support. Okay, so now that the Unity project's created, you can just go to a browser and just search for source tree, and it should be the first one that shows up here. It'll say free Git GUI for Mac and Windows. I'm just going to click on that, download for Windows or Git for Mac, whatever you use. You just have to agree. Okay, now I'm just going to skip the registration part. Okay, and you just want to put your info in here. So it already has mine saved from last time that I installed this. And it's just asking for an SSH key. I'm just going to select no on that. I don't actually use SSH for anything on this. During the install on the first time, since I already have had it before, I think it automatically saved it. You might have to create an account with them. If that's the case, it's totally free. Just create the account and then follow along right after that. Okay, so now that it's open, I just want to talk about a few things here. So the first thing you see here is local and remote. So I'm going to make a separate video covering remote ones using GitHub after this. In this video, we're just going to talk about using version control locally. And what that means is it's going to save all of the changes and the backup on your computer in the same project folder. 
The benefits to this is you have full version control, so you can roll back your project to different states. You have backups. Um, you, you can do things called branching later where you make different paths in it. All of that is available, but it's not a complete backup in the sense that it's stored elsewhere. So if something happens to your project folder when you're using local version control, that will be lost if there's a problem with those files. So it's not a true backup in that sense. Whereas when we set up a remote one, then you'll have one offsite stored on a website. Okay, and the next options here is add and create. So add will let you add an existing set of version control, which is called a repository. So if you had a project set up before and you just installed source tree again, like I did, and you wanted to add it, you can just click on that and select the folder and it's gonna add all the history back in here. So for starting a new project, we wanna create though. So I'm gonna click create. And then for the destination path, we wanna select the path of our game. So I just need to browse to the folder here. So this is the project folder for the Unity project that I just created. So if I select that one, hit select folder. Now it's gonna put it here. I can put a different name if I wanted here. I'm gonna leave it the same. And then in this drop down, just leave it selected as Git. There is different options for different types of version control. I'm not gonna cover that at all. And then you don't have to worry about creating it on the account. We just want it local, so let's hit create. Okay, and it says the destination path already exists. Do you wanna continue and create a repository in this folder? Yes, we do. So all, it, all it's saying is that folder we selected is already an existing folder. Do you, are you sure you wanna put it here? Okay, so I'm just gonna select yes. Okay, and now we have version control set up for this project. So I'm just gonna show you briefly how this works here. So if I look at the folder, this is the project folder I created. And if I open this, notice now I have a .git folder inside of our project. And when you look in Unity, you're not gonna see it here. So this is not gonna show because it's a hidden folder. So that's just there for Git. The only reason I have it here is because I have show hidden folders enabled. Now you don't wanna actually go and modify anything in this folder or do anything in there unless you know what you're doing. For basic stuff, we don't wanna to touch that at all because it can and usually will break the version control setup. But I just wanted to show you that's all it is, is it's a hidden folder in our project and this is where it's gonna store all of the changes. Okay, so now inside of our source tree project here, you can see at the top we have it, it's set to Astraos, which is my project. And we have this section called unstaged files. So what this is saying is this is all of the files that source tree sees inside of that project that it hasn't actually done anything with. So basically files that changed from the last time we made a save. And by save, I mean inside of source tree, which is called a commit, not saving inside of unity. So all of these files are the ones that source tree says, Hey, I see something's different here. You haven't saved these. What do you want to do with them? And that's what they mean by unstaged. The top part here is staged files. What this is for is files that we're going to include in our commit or our save. So you'll notice if you select something here, you can just right click on it and select add, or you can click this plus button here and it's going to add it to staged files. So now if we did a save, it would save this .vs config file, but that's it. None of these other ones. And you have a button here that'll do stage all. So this is saying it has detected large files that are over 10 megabytes. Are you sure you wanna add them? So this is just a warning. It's still gonna add them if we select yes. So now it's gonna go through and now it's gonna select all of these. So I'm just gonna close that. I don't wanna actually do this here because we don't need that many. And I'm gonna remove the staged files one. So I'm just gonna click the minus. So now we have nothing staged here. Now, if you're not very familiar with how Unity uses the files in the project folder, there's several folders in there that just store settings and values that Unity uses to speed up your project workflow. They're not actually files that you need to save and they're recreated anytime Unity's open if they don't exist. The main one we're talking about here is the files inside of the library folder. Everything inside the library folder is just metadata that Unity uses and it stores it for your project. If that folder is not there, Unity will recreate it when you open the project. It does take longer for Unity to open if you don't have the library folder there as it needs to recreate it. But for a backup purpose, that's completely fine. So 
that is actually the largest folder in any of your projects. And on a bigger project, it's not uncommon for that folder to be multiple gigabytes. So there's no reason for us to save that. And if you look here, I'm just scrolling through the unstaged items and notice all of these are in the library folder. And there's thousands upon thousands. We don't need to save any of these. So using Git allows for this. If we right click on any of them here, you get an option to ignore. And if we select ignore, it gives the option where you can ignore the exact file name, all files with this extension, or everything beneath the library folder. That's what we want. We don't need anything that's in that library. So if I select that, now notice they all disappeared from here. And this actually created a new file in our project. It's called a git ignore file. And if you select this, you can see it just has the library folder. There's a lot that you can do with this here. I'm not gonna cover much about creating an ignore file other than doing it automatically here by right clicking and ignoring. But you can set up a lot of different things here. And what I'm actually gonna do is instead of just us creating this manually, there's an online group saved file that you can get from anywhere. And it's gonna have all the commonly used folders and files that don't need to be saved. So to find this, if you just go to Google and search for Unity space git ignore, you're gonna find the first one from a website called github.com. And we're actually gonna use that site in the next video when I show you how to save your project online. But if we just click on this one, you see it's got this file here and it's got all these different ones. So here we see the library, we see a temp folder, we see object builds, logs. So it's gonna remove a lot more than just what we have. So if you just select everything in here, hit control C to copy it. And let's go back in here. If we just select this git ignore file and then we right click on it and select show and explore, you're gonna see it here. And you can either double click to open it in Notepad or if it's not associated, just right click and select edit. And it's gonna come up here with this text file. So we just wanna highlight and delete that. So there's nothing in here, control V to paste. And now we have all of the data saved from that website. So just hit control S to save or file save. Now, if we close this, close this folder, if we move off and select get ignore again, see it's updated here now. So now this has all these file types and they're all gonna be removed from here. So now if I scroll up and down, look at how small this is now compared to it. So now I wanna actually save this data into a commit or you can kind of think of it almost like a save state of our project. So if I hit stage all, it's gonna move all the files into the stage files. That means we're gonna save each of these into the commit we're about to do. So down here in the bottom, we just need to type a description of what this commit is. So this one, I'm just gonna call it first commit dash start of project. So this is just a text field. This can be anything you want it to be. You usually want to put something descriptive to explain what you did in this commit. So I'm going to hit commit and now that's saved. And now we have this kind of graph up here that shows this is our first commit. So don't worry about this master here. This is just explaining that this is the, the master branch. Later, when you get more advanced with Git, you can start doing separate branches where you work on different things at once or you'll have different people working on different aspects of your game. But that's that's something that I don't even use myself personally, so it's not something I'd be comfortable teaching because I don't use it enough. But now we have our first commit. So if you select this, you can actually see this is all the files that were changed in this commit. And this saved everything in our project, which we haven't done anything yet. So just to show it, I'm gonna now create some random objects. I'm just gonna create a cube. I'll drag this over here, create another one, create a capsule, move that over here. I'll scale it up a bit. And let's create, and we'll create a plane and we'll scale that up too. Okay, so now we have these couple objects in our game. I'm gonna hit Control S to save the scene. So now the project's updated and saved. And now if I go back to source tree, check this out here, we see the sample scene file which that's the name of our scene. It's showing that it's been updated as it's back in here. So if we hit stage all, and now we have that file set to stage. And if we just go up to the commit button here, 
that's going to bring up this text window again where we can put another description. So I can put something like created game level in first scene. Just something explaining what we actually did here. Now if I hit commit, that created the new commit. So you can see up here, now we have two commits. We have the first one, then creating the game level. And if you select each one, again, you see this is what was changed in the first commit. Then the second one, the only thing we changed is the sample scene. And if you really want to dive into it when you select, it'll actually show what was specifically changed in those files. But that's something I've never needed to use, but it's there if you need it. You can actually see the difference in code and you can see the position of the objects moved here. So all of the details are in there. Now, one thing to note, you don't actually need to exit Unity to do this. So you can leave your project open. You just need to make sure it's saved because anything that's not saved may not actually take effect if the files haven't been updated. And now we have our objects here. And to demonstrate, if I go to the first commit, if I right click on this, See, we have this option now, reset current branch to this commit. So if I select this, this is actually gonna change my project back to this first commit. So it's basically gonna get rid of this second commit, the creating game level completely. And it's just asking you to confirm, and then it gives you an option here. So you can keep all the changes, you can mix them, or a hard, update, which is going to get rid of any changes before it. So if I select the hard one, if I hit OK now, it's going to again warn me, basically any changes after this are going to be completely gone. I can't get them back. So if I select yes, notice it deleted that whole other commit. And if I go back into Unity, see it said the scene's been updated, reload. If I hit reload, all of those objects were gone. So it literally reverted my project back to that first commit. So this is something that if, if you make a bunch of changes and everything went completely wrong and you just want to get rid of everything you changed up to a certain point, you can go right back to that one. You just need to make sure that anything past it is going to be gone. Okay, so if you wanted to roll back to a previous one, not destroy all the ones after it like I just did, then you would want to do the soft reset. So you have multiple options there. Uh, it's pretty rare that I, I do any rollbacks, but it is very handy to have it just in case something big happens. Okay, so that should give you a start to how you can do this for your project and then start playing around with it to learn it a bit more. And as I mentioned in another video, I'm going to show you how you can set this up with the website GitHub. And then you can actually use this option at the top here to push. And you could push this change onto GitHub. So then it actually saves it on the website and you can make it public or private there. So we'll talk about that in another video. But for now, that's it for this one. And thanks for watching.